I'm just going to have a quick go at cleaning up these um, cases on this side. Now, I'm not removing them from the bike, um, so I'm just going to uh, clean them in situ just using Solvol Autosol just by hand, and we'll see how they come up. So there won't be a mirror fi finish like chrome like are on my bike because that's a machine polish that you do with the cases off the bike. Uh, and take and I normally take them to a specialist polisher and they come up they literally look like chrome but we'll see how, how I think these will come up you know pretty well so they'll be nice and shiny without being uh, mirror so to some people's eyes that, that's that's good because you know they can be like too shiny uh, anyway that's what they look like now let's see what they look like after they've been polished by hand okay and uh, there we are just polished them up and I'm really pleased with those uh, you compare them to what uh, they were like before. So I've got, uh, just been hand polishing. And what I've done is I've just used a Solval Alter Sol with a couple of rags. And then I've also used a Dremel with a soft uh, tip on to get into the little bits that you can't reach. And then I've got my cordless drill and I've just got a couple of soft mops uh, on there. And uh, that's how they come up. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, these were already polished. It's just they slowly tarnished over the 10 years it's been sitting there. So, uh, you know, that helps a lot. Um, but, yeah, very pleased with them. So I'm going to do the primary chain case now. Uh, let's have a look because that's uh, I've got that off the bike at the moment. So I'll give that I'll give that a polish up now. Sorry, man's fitting the a new alarm system. And, um, yeah, yeah, very good. Very pleased. You know, nice and nice and shiny looking like the sort of new bike it kind of is again and there we go i've polished up the primary side as well <clears throat> i'm really chuffed with that how well that's come up again just using solval auto sol a couple of rags i also got my mops on the drill and uh the uh, dremel for doing the little bits and bobs like you know the uh, for the Allen key and so on and that's and I'm really chuffed with that that's come up uh, really nice so and I actually polished it I just put the case in loosely on there it was actually easier than having it on the bench you know so I could use both hands and yeah that's come up so nicely so uh, yeah we're beginning to have a, a bike that's looking like a, a proper Norville again Right, I'm going to put the primary chain case cover back on now. Uh, everything's greased, obviously it's running dry because it's got the belt drive conversion. Uh, and the clutch is designed to run dry. I've greased all the, the only thing is the actual starter mechanism, which uh, we need to grease. And that was the thing we had the problem with. And, and I think the problem was it was just a grease had coagulated or something. Or I don't know what happened to it over the 10 years it's been standing and we just uh, lubricated it slightly I used a thinner grease just to and suddenly bang there it was it was all fine again so uh, everything's been talked up etc so we're just going to put the cover back on I've decided not to put a gasket back on because uh, there wasn't one there originally um, and the reason is basically I, I just don't think a we need one and b we did have some water in there and I think that was from condensation so my, my thinking being that if um, well, it's actually probably easier to drain <laughs> the primary chain case without a gasket or certainly more likely that it's going to drain by itself rather than with a gasket so rather than stopping things getting in we want to stop we want to help things get out anyway that's I've decided not to put a gasket on so I've put the um, uh, gear change lever back on now the thing about the gear change uh, lever and the associated uh, uh, sort of, uh, gear with it is that it can go on in any position that wheel can go on in any position in relation to this one on a triumph trident you have to like time it it has to go this has to be in this like version of this has to be in an exact position which is a bit awkward but this one doesn't matter so that's great so yeah we've greased it up 
uh, and then we've got these location dials here and this oh actually I haven't greased that I forgot to do that this is the end of the um, the, the crossover shaft for the gear change and that will run in this housing here in, in there you can see that so I'm just going to whack a bit of grease on that okay now one other thing to note can we see that this being a, a Norville is that this is the uh, timing indicator which on a mark three i'm not sure about earlier models but that's just screwed on but the original one of these should actually have slots in where these screws go so you can move it and you think well how, how come i don't want to move the, the timing surely it's set this is the uh, for the uh, ignition well the thing is it was never quite perfect so what you do is there's a plug on the other side of the engine which I shall try and do a little video of now and kind of insert it into this video, as it were. And uh, what you do is you put the timing plug in and that sets the timing exactly. Is it 28 degrees before top dead center? I think so. So that sets the engine. Then you would actually unscrew these and move this pointer, move this sort of, uh, which has got the degrees on the back to, to the exact position in line with the timing marks on the rotor okay because this wasn't exact that's why they had little slots in so you could move it so you set the timing through that plug uh, and then when that's set you could just move this a little bit to get it spot on right so this here is uh, the plug i'm talking about so all this is this is just a plug which is you can remove in order to insert this special tool right so this tool here will just screw into that hole once that plug is out and then it's got this plunger on it and what happens is you turn the crankshaft until and the crankshaft is um has got a, a drilling in it a hole that lines up with that and at 38 uh, sorry 28 degrees before top dead center is it 28 um then suddenly if you push on this plunger and turn the engine over then suddenly the plunger will go lock into the hole and that means the engine is locked at exactly 28 degrees before top dead center that's the exact position which will then allow you to adjust the little uh, plate on the other side to then read exactly 28 degrees before top dead center as well and then you can leave that plate there and you know it's accurate right let's pop this on and get the gear lever about right so i don't have to what i shouldn't have put the gear lever on here, should i because i want it in roughly the right position save me taking it off again so it's about there but i'm going to take it off again anyway because it's probably the wrong position ow put the fingers there we go that's probably about right and that's it, it it's on so the long uh, Allen screw in there, and there are actually two sizes generally of these. There's that one's long one, and then the others are, some are slightly longer than the others. Yeah, thinking about things now in retrospect, it's always good to think about things. I think the two longer Allen screws, of course, correspond to the two dowels. The locating dowels which would make sense because obviously the dowels are recessed slightly so you need a slightly longer uh, thread uh, you know behind the dowel so i think i'm right in saying without taking it back off again that these two longer ones correspond with the two dowel holes and i'm going to put the uh, rocket covers back on i'm just going to i'll spray a bit of oil a bit more oil in them can just see the oil begin to come out in that one um, but on the actual uh, rockers themselves uh, I probably won't bother to put well seal I'm, I'm a big well seal sealant person uh, but I'm not going to because as I say on these rockers uh, you know even, even though the engine's tilted forward so they, they don't um, the oil doesn't try and run out of the rocker and there's not a huge spray so they're not a big leak point is what I'm saying so I'm just going to put them on dry and also the advantage of putting them on dry is of course you can take them off again to check your 
um, tappets and that uh, without having to worry about guns, and gaskets and so on. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll put those back on. Oh, it's all beginning to come back together. I'm very pleased, very excited. And there we are, the uh, rocket covers are back on. I'm just giving them a light polish. And, uh, oh, the engine's beginning to take shape. <laughs> Getting back together again. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, all, uh, I'm all pleased and excited at the moment. It's all uh, looking okay. I'm good. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, yeah, don't over tighten this uh, centre nut because it's not supported, and you'll end up cracking the case if you're not careful. And also, there's an uh, an alloy washer that goes underneath it. The uh, exhaust rockers you can tighten them up because they tighten like onto a onto a stub. Uh, you know, they've got something to tighten against, but there's nothing under that, and so if you over tighten it, you can uh, damage the actual cover. Right. Uh, there we go and as I say I didn't use well seal on these uh, because I don't think they need them and it just makes it easier when you come to readjust the tappets at some point 